What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I really appreciate having me on. Man. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been. I've been watching you for so long. I never got a chance to talk to you, so this is a perfect <laughs> opportunity to get to talk to you. Um, right. Samson, man, listen. I've been watching you now for. I mean, you came on my radar like last year. What you know, yeah. we're doing when you did all the shows and stuff. So, yeah, I uh, I remember I had a conversation with Milos way I told him I said he should do the Arnold oh yeah you know I also had I, I had the same conversation with Ford too yeah and I remember so but listen I want to know about you man what was uh, uh, listen you you you're from Nigeria originally originally from Nigeria okay because UK my in my teens I think I was 16 at a time oh so you've so, been in so you've been in England forever I'm, yeah for a long long time you know yeah so yeah I mean Half of my family is still in Nigeria, other half is here, a few of them is in the US. So, you know, worked a full time job all, all through, you know, watching you guys the whole time. Yeah. I, yeah, man, I was always a big fan, seriously. And it was almost like, you know, I go to the gym, started to go to the gym about 2012. And my girl just uh, told me, you know what, I think you've got good genetics to do bodybuilding. And I was like, you know, I put it off for a long time thinking that nah, it wasn't for me. Then eventually, you know, 2014 was when I did my first amateur show, when she finally got me to do it. And as soon as I did it, loads of feedback was like, you know what, man, if you take this seriously, you could go a long way with it. So I just started pursuing it since then and just like, okay, let's see if this thing can really work. And, you know, one one stroke after the other, we just kind of made our way through it yeah. slowly and, you know, we're here. Who did you learn from in the beginning? Where, where, where did you get the info from? Man, I'm watching, watching online, you know, watching yeah. all the YouTube series from you, from, you know, Dave Palumbo, all them. You know, my girl, she, she does, a, she's always involved a lot and she does a lot of studying and she's buying all the books from everybody trying to read as much as you can about bodybuilding, you know. We didn't, where, I'm, where I live now, we didn't have a lot of bodybuilders around. We didn't have anybody who's done it before. Yeah. So trying to find information, okay, what's accurate, what's not, it was, it was a struggle, you know, but we just kept on, you know, picking up as much information as cipher and testing things out. If it works, we're like, yeah, we'll do that. If it doesn't work, we move on to the next one. You know, and we just kind of like just, you know, trial and error, trial and error. Right. You know, and slowly kind of just caught our way into it like that. Well, good, great genetics do help a little bit too, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so let me talk to you about like life before bodybuilding. So you moved to England as a teenager, you said. Yeah. And, yeah. and what, what, did, did you play soccer or something? No, I was, I was, I was, a, I, you know, I always play, I played football and obviously then move on to play rugby. Oh, you know? okay, and, okay. And, you know, I was always a skinny kid. Like I was really, even all the way up, remember I started bodybuilding when I was 29, you know, so I, I was always like, how, rugby. How, was, how old are you now? I'm 35. Damn, you're still young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, I was always skinny all through my life, like or everything else. And, you know, I started playing rugby for my local team. And they told me, you know what, you need to, if you're going to be taking hits from other guys, you need some mass. You need to put on some more size because yeah. you, know, you need to have something to do. So I started going to the gym from that point on just to pack on, like, just put on some muscle. Right. And, you know, and it just tend to happen quite quickly. And it was, everyone was like, man, you know what, you're getting a physique quite quickly on it. And, you know, and then my girl did said, she was looking around and she said, you know what, have you ever thought about bodybuilding as a sport? Like, and I was like, nah, you know, I, you know, I'm into that team sport of guys, guys, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, nah, that's not my for me, you know. So it was it, for me, it was never in my perception at all. I never really even had an idea that much about it, right? You know. But then when we finally sort of clicked, and I did one show, and I realized, wow, this is something. This is definitely unique. Where you know, in a team sport, you know, you can play your best game, and if the team loses. That's the end of that. Good luck with that. But in bodybuilding, you can give your heart out and you get rewarded for your own hard work. You know, and for me, that just sold for me instantly. And I was like, okay, yeah, I like this right here, you know. Yeah. How, is there is there a rivalry? I mean, I don't think there is one. <laughs> Between you and Nathan? Because of you both, <laughs> you guys are both in England? Oh, man. Yes, there is. Oh, there is? <laughs> There is. They've, it's been for a while, but it's been since 2019, you know. You know, Nathan was the first bodybuilder from the UK that really, like recently, that really popped out, right. you know. And, you know, I mean, he got, my, he got his pro card when I was doing my first ever pro show. I mean, my first ever amateur show. Got gotcha. you. In 2014, you know, and then he was British champion, and, you know, you looked at him, you're looking up to him, like, damn, look at these guys, such things. So I looked up to him all the way to kind of training to 
And then 2019, we had our first show where we went head to head at the British Grand Prix. And even then, I didn't really see it that way, you know. And I think uh, the promoter at the time said, oh, they wanted to hype up the show. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm coming for Nathan, you know, I'm, I'm coming for him. Let's do it. And she ended up being this thing on stage. And I didn't, at the time, it was more just like a hype, just a hype of it. Mm -hmm. But it ended up becoming something a lot more after that. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then obviously last year, so hit it off <laughs> into the head to head. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but you guys, you guys don't have any issues, right? Not from me, anyway. Not from no, me. I, I don't think from him but, either. No, he's, he's, he's athletes. He's athletes. We're yeah. athletes, you know. So we bump heads are athletes. There's nothing ever personal like that. It's just, you know, we both headstrong. We both want to win. We both want to be the best. And, and you both look great. And there you go. Yeah. So this is it, you know. Yeah. He pushes me to give even more. And I'm sure that it's the same thing for him. Yeah. So that's all it is. It's nothing more than that. But he's, that's all um, his rivalry. Unfortunately, he's, uh, he's, he had to pull out of the Arnold. Yeah, I just saw it today. Yeah. yeah, he sent me a... Nathan's so fucking funny. He's, <laughs> I, I, I saw a video where he was doing a leg press in a sling. Yeah. So I texted him because I wanted to know what's going on. If, if it's just, if he, you know, if, I don't know, you know. And he sent, and he sent, and then he texted me back. He said, I'm going to send you a voicemail on WhatsApp. Yeah. So he sends me a two and a half minute voicemail. Yeah. And I can't understand what he's saying. He forgot. Oh, look, put it this way: you ain't the only one. I'm from the UK, and I still can't understand yeah. it all the time. I so. when I talk to him, like I'm talking to you right now, and I yeah. see him, I can yeah. understand him. You know, I'm focusing. Yeah. Yeah. But on a voicemail, he forgot that he's talking to me, or probably he thinks that he's talking to his to his oh. boys that understand the slang. I I really oh. still I'm still not a hundred percent sure I know what the issue is. <laughs> Even though he explained it probably in detail, yeah. But I, I just, so. I just, yeah, something with the biceps tendon down in the yeah. forearm, and I heard a few things that are, <laughs> a few words that I understood, but yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he's out, which, uh, yeah, which is, yeah. it's, it's really, it's, it's really. I mean, uh, it, it hurts the lineup a little bit because oh, he yeah, is one definitely. of the top guys. Yeah. So, so, um, let me talk. Let me talk to you about uh, last year ago. You guys yeah. went head to head for like two or three shows back to back. Yeah. Yeah. You ended up beating him in Prague, yeah. Where you qualified for your first Olympia. Mm, oh yeah, you know. I mean, how, me, to tell, tell me how did that feel? Not only be oh, beating him, but qualifying for the Olympia. Man, it felt amazing, man. It felt unreal because you know, like we said, we battled a few times in the past, and he was always the it was always the driving force in it. And then coming into 2020, I knew it because we both had the same show in mind, so I knew he was the guy to always he was going to be the guy to beat. So we did the Arnold, he got, he won. We did the, we did Italy, he won. And then obviously I went off to Egypt and Regan won there. And then when we came back in Prague at this point, I was sort of losing hope. I was thinking, you know what, man? I don't know if this is gonna happen this year. You know, I don't know if it's gonna be this year. And you know, obviously my coach Milos and he's saying, you know what, you improve every show. You, the, the physique you brought to the Arnold a few years ago in Italy is not the same physique you have now three weeks later. Mm -hmm. I think now you actually have good enough physique to beat him and actually win this lineup. And, you know, I thought, okay, you know, he's your coach. He's supposed to say that. That's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, of course, you know. Yeah, Milos so, is the most optimistic guy, and, and, and that's, oh, a, yeah. that's a good and I thing. I actually love him for it. I yes, love him for yes. it. You know, he, he, he picked you up real fast. Like, yeah. you can feel down, he'll pick you up real fast. So he sort of said that going into Prague, and he said, okay, you know, I have an idea. We're going to bring you as full as we can hmm. and really make you pop on that stage. And I just probably like, look, I'm in your hands, man. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Right. So we did that. And even when we did the pre-judging, I didn't have any idea where I was. I didn't know if I was fourth, if I was first or second. You know, so I came back to Ottawa and I spoke to Milos and he goes, well, it looks like you're fighting for the win. You know what I mean? Do you think so? I'm not sure about that. He's like, yeah, it looks that way. So obviously when we then did the finals and we got the result, it was, wow. So, so when it was down to the last two, you and Nathan, oh, what <laughs> went through your mind? Oh, man, because when they were calling out the result, you know they called Nathan out as fourth. At that point, I was like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Nathan yeah, didn't even yeah, win. Who, yeah. who, 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 got, who got second? Oh, uh, Rafael Brandeo. Okay, so it was you and Rafael standing. Oh, man. What went through your mind? Honestly, because obviously Nathan was the person I thought, okay, if he's going to be close, it's going to be between me and him at that point. Right. Okay, so they called him out as fourth, and I'm thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> at that point, already I'm excited. I'm like, I don't care. At least finally I got to beat him. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. And they called Regan as third. 
And at this point, I'm thinking, yeah, are they really? Am I? Am I? Am I really going to win this? Is it possible? Is it actually going to happen this time? Yeah. And you know, we've been in that position so many times where we've been second. I know. Third, second, I know. Third. I know how that so feels. At every single time you're at that position, no matter how much you try to believe, okay, maybe now, you hear your name come out second, you're like, oh well, you know, you move on. So at that point, you're standing going, is it really going to happen now? Is it really going to happen now? <laughs> And then they call, they call Rafael second. Oh, man, it felt like every single work you've ever done, every single training session, every pain and every time, it felt like, oh, my God, that moment, it's all been worth it. Right. <laughs> you know, and it is over the moon. It's especially, especially after doing so many shows back to back. And I'm, exactly. I know how hard that really is. And, you know, oh, yeah. and I also know that Milos is a, he's all yeah, he, for it. Yeah. Compete yeah. as much as you can, make a name for yourself, you know, and make yeah. as much money as possible. Yep, you know? yep. And he, you know, he pushes you up doing, oh, I don't do the next one. Then do another one. Do another one. I'm like, man, I'm tired, man. He's yeah. like, no, no, it's, you're in shape. One more week. What's that? Wasn't there another one after Prague? There was. There was Romania after Prague, which was a week later. The thing is, we were building, we didn't, I mean, we weren't sure we were going to win Prague. So we were building up points anyway. So I already had Romania booked in the flights, the hotel, everything booked in to do that show anyway. So when we won Prague, I was like, well, that's me then. And me was like, come on, man, you. You've already booked it for you. You've already paid for the flight. You've already, you might as well just go in and go get it done anyway. Right. And you know, and make some money. And I was like, well, hell, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. So, so a- after the shows last year, did you did you, was the plan to shut it down? People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back. You know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. This plan was already to shut it down for the Olympia. Yeah. You know, we're like, okay, it gives us a year of off season to really improve and stuff like that. And you know, Milo sort of hinted to me then, oh, I want you, I want you to do Arnold. And I was like, well, it all depends if I get an invite. If I get an invite, of course I'll do it. It's a dream come true for me, you know. <laughs> and I was like, hell, if I get a year, but if I don't, you know, it's still good. It's still win-win because yeah. then I have more time. So he was like, okay, when we got back, he was like, just don't go completely off and thingy just yet. Yeah. Wait for the Arnold's come out. So let's just have a plan to have you rebound. Did you, did you put in for the Arnold? Yeah, yeah. I, I put in for the Arnold every year. I've always yeah. put in for the Arnold. Well, you know, so this time, so obviously at that point, I'm not optimistic anymore. I'm like, well, come on. What's different? What's different this time? I mean, I was like, you know what? Yeah. I think after what you've just done, I think you will get that invite. So just, you know, be ready for it. And I was like, well, okay, fair enough. But I'm not, I'm not going to hold my breath, but I'll just do whatever you say. So, you know, and when obviously we, the list came out. Oh man, I, I was jumping off the bed. I was bouncing so, up and down the so, place. So he didn't tell, he didn't call you before the list came out? No, no. Because no. I, I already told him you're on the list. He, you told him, and he told me. The thing is, he told you, and you like, I'm like, okay, okay, but is it is it yeah, is yeah, it 100 yeah, yeah. yet? Is it is it 100 <laughs> yet? You know. So even though we saw sort of excited, but we kind of thinking, but you know, uh, is it really? Is it is this really happening? You know, mm. is it actually legit? We're gonna wait until the list officially comes out, and then we're gonna be like, okay, it's definitely on. So where, where's your motivation level right now? Oh man, it's through the roof. Through the roof. Absolutely through the roof. Yeah. You know what? Uh, you've worked hard for so long and you've been knocked back and knocked back and knocked back, but you keep working hard and going through it and every time and then. When it's something positive finally comes out of that hard work, it sort of reflects back on the idea of all that work you've done actually does pay off. Mm. So all it does to you just fires you up to work even harder. You know, you think, okay, if I've got this far from the hard work I've done, then you know what? Get the gloves off. I'm ready to go again. You know, so that motivation from that was just like, wow, okay, all or nothing, let's go, let's yeah. let's get it done. What did anything change training wise or anything? Oh yeah, we went we went we went to not sixty real fast, man. After that, it was like, okay, we had to make the training more intense. We have to find a way to really push the boundary in it. You know, so I had my friends train me. You know, there's a thing like when you train on your own, there's only so far you can truly push yourself. Mm-hmm. You know. You get to failure and you sort of just, you know, you can't push anymore. You just sort of call it one rep short, whatever. When you train with somebody that's standing right there and telling you, no, nah, just one more, one more. You tend to just push a little bit more into that deepness, into a little bit more into that pain. And that's what basically I've been chasing this whole time. Is like, I train with people that would just let me push just a little bit harder than what I would normally fall short of. 
And that's what we've had all through this prep, man, is just pushing through and going through pain and mm-hmm. session after session. And I'm sore for days for it. But. Yeah. Milos is a big ad- advocate of uh, uh, giant sets. Do you incorporate oh, yeah. giant sets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love them. I love yeah. them. You know, giant set, drop set, super set, I absolutely love them. And I think, you know what, for me, it just seems to work. It works, match for my physique. Uh-huh. And I think, you know, Milos all sort of sussed that out and he's figuring out how my body works and how to improve it. And it just seems like we match in terms of training style and mm. what we like to do. And it just we just click on that. Do you think you're going to be able to improve from the last showing in oh. 21 to the, to the Arnold, even though it's a oh, yeah. short time? Oh, yeah. I think we already have, you yeah. know, seriously. I think definitely. But I, and I'm, I was even shocked. I didn't think, I thought, okay, you know what, maybe we might, you know, just improve a little bit. We might get maybe two pounds heavy or something, and that'll probably be, you know, or maybe be deep. Because, and, you know, Milos was like, you know what, yes, of course we'll get to improve. And we pushed it through, and we did all the sets. And now we're looking at it, and we're thinking, four weeks out, we're like, okay, you're pretty much ready to get on stage. Yeah. Okay. Now just hang in there and let your skin thin out as much as you possibly can. And really, you know, let's get get you to the crazy condition that you've ever been before. Yeah, it really shocks people. What What does it feel like as an athlete, uh, you know, with a with a great coach, of course, and 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 seeing that guys like Regan, who's also an athlete from Milos, yeah. he's over there in in Las Vegas training with him every day. Get to get to use all the expertise that he can offer. What does that feel like being in England and 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 just seeing that on online? I mean, before. Before it used to bother me, but literally after last, it doesn't, I don't really concern. I'm not really concerned yeah. because at the end of the day, I always feel like this. I know Milos gives a hundred percent to all these athletes and he gives a hundred percent to me. Whatever he does with the other athletes or the people that want in front mm-hmm. of him, it's not more my business. Right. You know, it doesn't, it shouldn't have anything to do with me. As long as you're bringing me at my best and you're bringing him at his best, the rest is left to the judges based on the judge's opinion. So when you think about it like that, why it shouldn't concern you what the other he does with the other athletes. Because at the end of the day, he's bringing you at your best. Yeah, but is it your plan to come in earlier and to maybe to take yeah, advantage yeah, of a couple yeah. of weeks, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Because I'm, I'm not I'm flying a week before the Arnold actually started. We're meeting up a week earlier. And that throughout that whole week, we're going to train together and everything else to get me into the show. Oh, so, so. You just, you're just coming in a week before the show? I'm only coming in a week earlier. Why not come a little bit earlier? Because we thought we were going to come in a week earlier. Because then, But then I have to go to Vegas and stay for Vegas for a week, and then from yeah, Vegas flight to three hour, Ohio. It's a three-hour flight. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's a, it's a 15 hours flight from here. I know. That's why I said, you know, yeah. why not come two weeks earlier and then, you know, you all fly together to Columbus. That's what I used to do because when I used to, yeah. when I lived in Germany or in Thailand, I used to come in like a month or sometimes oh, wow. two to three months. For the Olympia, I would come three months early. Oh, wow, that's actually really good because we know we were planning something like that for the Olympia, definitely. I mean, yeah. The plan for the Olympia was, uh, was going to do something like that. But I don't know, it was almost like it got dropped on us by late, you know, and we were like, okay, this is what we're going to work with. So we just work with what we have on our plate. Yeah, what's the situation like now with people from England traveling to the U.S.? No problems? No problem now. As long as you're the vaccine, that's it. You can fly in and fly out freely. So yeah, you see, like, that really does help this year massively. So it means yeah. I can actually come in and actually do U.S. shows this year. I don't have to worry about, you know, going to some other country for two weeks before coming in and stuff like yeah. that. So, What about, all, uh, do they still ask you to do uh, uh, COVID tests before you come in? Oh, no, yeah, you always got to do I think it's a 24 hours before you travel. Oh, wow. You have to do a COVID test. So, yeah, so this is the thing where you have to really be on it. And this is one of the reasons why we, we're making sure we come in early. Yeah. So in case anything, you know, goes awry, we're like, okay, we still got days to they, sort of fix it they, bring it in. They might even do COVID tests at the Arnold because they did it last year. Oh, I, don't, I don't know about oh, this year. We had to, yeah. Everybody had to test, and then there was a few people I mean, came up positive. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so Whit, wow. Whitney, Whitney Jones, she tested oh, positive. Wow. She couldn't compete. Miss Olympia. There was uh, there was two girls in the fitness. There was a few guys in the pro- on the production team. There was yeah, they had to do the tests wow. in the hotel. Oh wow, that's great. M- matter of fact, we had to test twice because when we tested the first time after we arrived, and then later when somebody was positive, everybody, every- tested everybody had to retest again. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, no. but then, but then, you know, that was that that was uh, city of Columbus. I guess they have the you know the restrictions yeah, are very strict. So I think it's a little easier now. So it might not be. Yeah. It might not be no testing. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, either way, it still yeah. works anyway. I mean, I'm just glad to be able to. As long as I get to compete. Right, yeah, right. Where, where, where do you see yourself in in this lineup? Because the lineup in the beginning was, you know, oh. nobody wanted to do the Arnold, and all of a sudden it was stacked. Every- <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> 
I looked at the lineup, man, and I'm looking, I'm going, man, why is it that I don't know that I end up getting fighting for as one that is completely stacked up? I'm like, oh, I, I know, but man. think about this. Think, think about the positive. You know, you're going against the guys that are top in the Olympia. Oh, yeah. So now oh, yeah. you get to see, and the world get to see where you stand next to these guys. Uh, and that is the biggest positive about doing it Arnold now, and especially having months till the Olympia. So yeah. you can see where you stand, and then you have months to improve on that. Mm. So for me, I think, yeah, that is a positive about it. And you know what? Looking at it now, and I'm thinking, man, I really want to fight him to be in that first call out and be a top three now. For me, that will definitely be a dream come true. That will definitely be a goal. Mm. So sort of fight in there, get that first call out and be in that top three. Yeah. I, I, definitely be I don't see why this couldn't be possible. You know what I mean? Because you're you're a taller guy. Yeah. How tall are you? I'm five eleven, six foot. Yeah. So house. you're a taller guy. What's your body weight on stage? Uh, right now we're two eighty. Last time we competed with two seventy. You competed at two seventy. Yeah. And what's your weight today? Uh, two eighty as of this morning. Two eighty. So you're probably going to be somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's hard to say because you're probably already super super lean. Yeah. yeah, you know, how far are you, what do you think, how far are you away from contest shape? I mean, right now, I mean, we're looking at, we were already last week. Oh, okay, well, so, we you, just so you're already there. <laughs> yeah, we're already, at this point, we just kind of coasted into the show. Almost. Yeah. How good does that feel when you're already there four weeks out from a show? It's frustrating, believe it or not, it's actually frustrating. <laughs> because why? you look at it every day, you go, because you look at it every day, you go, okay, come on, why can't it just be now? Why yeah. can't we just get it over and done with? And you, you almost felt like you're balancing on a needle's edge because you're right there and you don't want to tip one way, you don't want to tip the other way, you just want to just hold it. So you're almost holding your breath right in the middle going, come on, another week, another week, another I'm, week. I'm glad you're bringing this up because I, I used to feel the same and you're like ready four weeks out. You take pictures and the pictures are fucking unbelievable. And then, you know, but then you get, you have days where you don't look yeah. as good. And this the next day yeah. you look great again. It's like, yeah. oh, how can we time it to make sure we look good on that day? You know? Yeah. And this is it. So you're literally on edge. You, you, you know, as much, because if you were a bit behind, you know, you just, all right, go, 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 go. You can do go, go, go. Okay. Yeah. Hard, more cardio, more food, you know, really dial it in. But when you're already at that brink and you're right at that edge where you're like, okay, we're ready. All we got to do is just hold on to this until we get there or get better. It's it's really at that point where your nerves start. Every day you wake up, you look like, okay, everything's still good, okay. Next day you come in, if you're not so good, you're like, oh, man. Right. And then you go back again. So you're constantly, you know, you're constantly checking. You're constantly wondering, okay, you know, where are you? So so what do you do four weeks out, being already right there, ready to go? What do you do or what do you, you know, what is it you don't do anymore? What about we cardio? Keep doing, we keep doing what we've been doing. We keep doing and we let We let the body just decide because... If you get if you if the skin is getting thinner, you ride it anyway, you know. And you know, like between last week and this week, Milos he didn't make any changes to my diet. He didn't make any changes to me because he's like, look, your body is responding to it anyway. So let's just coast it out and see how it goes. Mm. And then we have obviously you you get things that you do trial runs. You know, you get a weekend, you do a trial run to see okay, when we dry you out for the show, what are you gonna look like? How much carbs does it really take to fill you out compared to any other time? And, you know, you try, you learn th those things early. So when the time comes, it's not a guessing game when you mm. actually get to the weekend of the show. It's not okay. But the mind still plays a little trick with you. Oh, the mind. mind. You know, everybody say about prep and they think the physical part is the hard work. The mind yeah. is horrible. And this prep has been horrible. Why? Mentally, it's been, it's been the most, it's the most biggest show ever, biggest show I've ever done. Oh, so, so, course, so, so you course, think I'm, the pressure is more, there's more pressure? Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. Of course I'm stressed. Of course I'm feeling like, okay, you know, some days you have good days where you're thinking, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's do this. And then you have days, some days you look at yourself and go, oh, this ain't good enough. No, this, I, I can't do this. This is, no, no. And, you know, it's the mind and you, you got to trust the people around you to tell you, no, look, mm. it's in your head. Don't don't give in to it. it's in your head. Nah. But it does it does your mind is constantly there. I mean, it gets to point now now where you don't even sleep well at nighttime anymore because every single waking moment your mind is constantly thinking about things you should have done, things you should have do. You know, you never have that complete relaxing of just being okay. I don't care. I'm just gonna roll with it. You always constantly your mind is constantly thinking and you know you're always constantly rechecking what you've already checked and redoing what mm. you've already done just to make sure you know you don't mess up. Yeah, you put a lot of time in posing. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. how, how much how, how many how much uh, how much time you put in pose how many times so, you pose a week so we do 20 minutes every morning every day and then 10 minutes after every training session like you just do the mandatories oh no <laughs> no yeah, routines yeah. free posing you know just trans everything yeah. everything 
So we put a lot of emphasis. You know, like I said, like I grew up watching you guys during your era, you know, the Sean Rays, the Flex Wheelers, the Kevin Bones, those, those were the people I looked up to in that time. And I see how they pose on stage and I watch and I think, you know, that's beautiful. That's presentation and is is his best. Right, right. So they influenced me. So of course you want to give homage to that. You want to feel, you want to, that's what your idea of bodybuilding is to you. So of course I got to put the same time in there. At the end of the day, I'm a professional what you do. So why don't you do it professionally, you know, not just leave a part to, to chance, actually practice what you're supposed to be. Plus, I don't know if you know that, the uh, Arnold is the only show where they judge the posing routine. Yes, it plus, is. Plus, plus they give a best poser award. So there's yes, some there's is. some extra uh, there's some extra incentive. money to make. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely incentive. And you know, just from that alone, you're already thinking, okay, you normally practice your posing and everything anyway. You always put emphasis on your posing anyway. But now you actually have an incentive to actually make some points. Actually, you know, it's actually being judged. So hell. Go to town on it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, definitely. Yeah, you know about the price money too, right? Yes, of course. Of yeah. course. You know, at the end of the day, you know, if you if you if you don't get the place in you want and you still win Best Poser Award, you're still going home happy. Yeah, but if, listen, think about this for a second. I mean, first price is not two hundred thousand instead of one thirty. Yeah. So I think second is one thirty. So yeah. if you place top three, you're going home with seventy five G's. Man. <laughs> That's life changing right there. And that's not, you know, that's the kind of thing I don't like to think about because I, I you keep me up at night. Yeah. Because, but listen, <laughs> but this is this is what you work hard for. I mean, this is what I know. You know, and then and you know, then, you focus well the thing is you like to focus on the work and things you can control. When you start thinking about oh what it could be, you start dreaming and you start pushing yourself. That's all you start focusing on. So right, right now it's almost like okay get close enough to like practice on what you are, define what you're doing, you know, work hard and everything else. And then when you get there, then start wondering, okay, what was it feel like to actually win that much money yeah. in the show? I mean, yeah. what would that actually do to you? I think you're going to win a lot more money in, in shows in the future. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. I want to know, yeah. what, what does it feel like now being a British bodybuilder living in England after all the shows last year and qualifying for the Olympic, but your, how is your popularity level? You can feel I mean, it. Can you tell the difference? I mean, to a point now, when I go, no matter what gym I go to, I seem to always, people seem to know who you are. Yeah. That's one thing. But in a day-to-day -day lifestyle, nothing changes. Yeah. Nothing changes, you know, and I think I like that. I like the idea of, you know, just going to your gym, coming home, training, and everything else. No one actually knowing, they know you're a big guy that does bodybuilding, but that's as far as they know. Mm -hmm. And I think I like that because it keeps you grounded. It keeps you humble. It keeps you, you know, focused on what matters. And that's it. You don't have to ever go you know, feel big of yourself or feel like, okay, you know, yeah, I'm special now. No, yeah. this, is, this is how I started bodybuilding, just being that guy trying to make it through. Yeah. And even now when you finally get in their success <clears> in it, <throat> nothing's changed. You know, you're still just as grounded. You're still doing, you know, going to the same gym in the same style in the same way. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, that the work hasn't, you know, you don't soften at all. There's hunger and the grind is still there. Yeah. What's the bodybuilding scene like in, in England now? Oh, it's, great. it's yeah. great. I mean, now we have more active pros now we've ever had. You know, you got Nathan, you got James, you got Jamie Johal, you got Kuba, you got you got so many pros, you got about Hector, you got so many pros that we've never had actively competing before. Right. Right. So I think definitely so now is, British is team. The, But is there is there like a small competition that who's the number one British oh. bodybuilder? Of course there is, man. of course. I don't, of course there is, you know. We would be like, you know, as much as we, you know, we play nice with each other and everything else, but deep down. We want to kick each other's ass. But no, yeah, but no do you, but do you guys ever collab? Like, do do you training together, videos and stuff? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we do. I, well, I live too far away from the other guys, so not so much for me. Where are you from in England? Because I'm down Essex. I'm down the south side of England, and those guys are up north. Nathan's up north. That's why you can't understand him. Because <laughs> 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 guys are more down there on the other end of yeah. England. That's why. Yeah, Nathan is from uh, he's from Liverpool, right? Yeah, yeah. Liverpool. That's his house accent right there. Yes. You know, every time I go there. So, so if you're from the south in England, do you yeah. have problems with understanding the people from the north? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's not just me. No, it's not just you. Okay. No, no. Every time we go up north, it's like you know, you ask, you go to the reception, ask for anything, and you're like, huh? <laughs> what did you say? Huh? Huh? So that is not, believe me, it's not just you. No one understands them. That's it, normal. It doesn't even sound like it's English. I mean, it's <laughs> it's really. I mean, I, I could, I can't. Uh, and listen, there's some people from Liverpool that I can understand. Yeah. But Nathan, there must be another slang in Liverpool. Yeah. The deep, deep, the deep. Yes. Slang. Really, yeah. 
Yeah, he has that all the way to the T, man. That is definitely all that is. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. You know, sometimes you, you know when they speak to you, just smile and just nod your head. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 Samson, what's the plan now after the Arnold? Are you going? Oh, are you Arnold. are you since you're in the U.S. Are you going to Boston? Oh yeah. You know. So you're doing Boston. You know, because it's a week after and I'm in shape. And, you know, Mil Miller's been who he is. He's, there's no way he's not going to ask me to do that show. So he'll make I'm you, like, I'm also, he'll I'm make you walk there. Now and get ready. Yeah, of he'll... course. So. And besides, you know, at that point, you know you got months, like eight months to the Olympia. Boston is a week away. You can do that and then have still have a long off-season and rest and everything right. else. So is, there, is there a lineup out for or any information on who's competing in Boston so far? Or do you know anyone? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The only person I know confirmed so far is Regan. But in terms of line, I don't actually know who's actually who's actually going to be doing the show. I'm sure, sure that most of the guys from now on will probably be doing that. But other than that, I don't really know yet. Possible, possible. Yeah, it's, I, yeah, I would like to know. Shit, yeah, yeah. guys. Like, so, so when you look at the lineup at the Arnold, yeah. Now we'll take um, we we'll take Raphael out. We'll take Nathan out. Who else is out? Uh, Mohammed Shaban. Mohamed Shaban is out too. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. What happened to him? I think he's got a spinal injury. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, that's 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 serious. That's serious. Wow, that's three heavy hitters, man. Yeah. So that means there's everybody. Everybody who would be behind is going to move up. Yep. You know, so that's, so we basically end up. With, how many people are in the show now? I mean, this is like. It's I like, think now it's about eleven, isn't it? Eleven or twelve. Oh, okay. So. All right, let's go. Let's go through the lineup. Yeah, we got we got Brandon Curry mm -hmm. coming yeah. to redeem himself after the Olympia to make sure he wants to prove a point. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I think he's is going to be the one to beat. Oh, yeah. It's going to be very hard to beat, I believe. Oh yeah, I, without a doubt. You nuts. know, but there, but also there's William who is uh, yep. on another mission, on a new mission. Yep. You know. When, when when you look at those two guys, I mean, those are top Olympians. I mean, Brandon is the Mr. Olympia, and uh, and and um, both Arnold Classic champs, William both two times. Oh yeah. So where do you see yourself when you stand next to those guys? Where do you is, where do you is, see that you can shine? Because this is the exciting part. Because is the one thing I haven't ever done yet is stand mm -hmm. next to those two guys. Yeah. You know, I know that lower body are more dominant from what I've seen, uh -huh. but it's a whole different ball game standing next to them. Right. So, you know, you can use pictures, you can use videos, but we all know that's just pictures and videos. It's nothing like being actually next to the person. So I know lower body is something that I'll probably try to be more dominant at. I know we all round, we all have the same round muscle bellies and stuff like that, but until you actually stand next to them, because I know I'm obviously, and again, I'm taller, you know. Well, you're so definitely gonna stand out. Yeah, and this is it. So. But until you actually stand next to them and look at it, you really, you can't guess because you've never done it before. You never, you know, if we've done it in the years past and I can be like, okay, I've improved here and I've improved there. Maybe this will make me shine out. But when you haven't never done that before, you're basically just going off what you've seen and sort of, you know, trying to put it together that way. I know them, I know, I mean, Brandon is just insane. Brandon is wide, he's big, he's thick. You know, Lord knows, Lord knows how that's gonna go. But well, he's Mr. Olympia. That tells you exactly, everything. exactly, exactly. You yeah. know, so I think that's the exciting part is being able to just stand next to him and get a good gauge for yourself to say, okay, this is where I am. Yeah. This is where he is. How much work you got to do to catch up? But do, this is do, where do you play that scenario in your mind, in your head? Oh, all the you time, standing, all the time. You standing with like, with of both both of those guys? Of course, of course, you have to. The thing is, you know, we can all play the game of oh, I don't care. I just I focus on me. But we all know deep down, it kicks you up at night. You think yeah. about it. It's the most yeah. important show you've ever done. Of course, you gotta so, imagine what it was. So, like. so let's let let let's do this. Let's be a judge for a second. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now you look at yourself being at your best. Out of the eight mandatory poses, yeah. Where do you see what poses do you see where you can stand with them or possibly beat them? Um, absent eyes, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Absent eyes, that's definitely one. Um, side chest, close. I think side chest would definitely be a close one. Side tricep, same. But then the rest of them is a toss up. I really don't know. Mm. I really don't know what to stand next to. Yeah. You 
diet down. Train hard. And supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. But here's the thing, that's, and that's the beauty about bodybuilding, you know? Somebody can be the favorite, but somebody can be off. And this is it. You know, you know there's, a lot, there's a lot of things that goes into it, and that's just it. Until That's why it's all important until you actually get there, you actually yeah. stand there. Not that, not that I believe that William or Brandon will be oh, off because their no, track record, <laughs> their track record, finally, you know. speaks for themselves, exactly yeah. that. And, 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 and seeing Brandon's a couple of video, like short footage of yeah. him posing, he looks unbelievable. Oh, yeah. You know, his, oh, yeah. his legs look like they came up again. Oh, yeah. You know, and if he can hold on to that, even 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 at, even at the uh, during the uh, you know getting rid of the water process, I think yeah. I think this He's will be the, I think this will be the best brand yeah. we've we've seen in, in, in ever you know possibly 100%, possibly. 100%. But there's always this slight chance for some of the guys to come because we, we always you know think about best case scenario. Everybody's in yeah. top shape. That never yeah. happens. No, it no. never happens. You know, so there's guys where they're they're very consistent with their condition. You know, and some guys, this is just a hit or miss, you know. Yep, true, and, true, and true. And I think that there's a lot of pressure on a lot of people for the Arnold. I think, mm -hmm. there, I think there's a lot of pressure on Brandon, too, because yeah. he has to prove, again, that he is the best in the lineup, you know, yeah. and, and which will, you know, make it's it easier for him. Olympia, yeah, yeah we'll go, go, going for the Olympia, he will be the one to beat again, you know, yeah. next, next to Rami, of course. But like I said, and I said this from the beginning when I talked to Regan, I remember I said, listen, this is a chance for any of you guys to come in and finally make a, a literally break through and make a name for yourself. Oh, yeah. You know? And this is, and yeah, and this is exactly how I see this show, you know. I mean, having competed in the U.S. properly yet and having a big show like this is that chance to break through. And, you know, as much as it is, what a better chance it is than standing to the current champ Right. And, you know, and actually standing next to them and see where you are toe to toe. Right. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, really. Well, in the lineup, there's three Arnold Classic champions. Oh, wow. Oh, is it four? Is... Cedric, Brandon, oh, yeah. William, and who else? Is there another one? No, I think three. Uh, three, three. Yeah. Wow. So there's three so, Arnold Classic champions. So that that's makes it all the more exciting, doesn't yeah. it? It really does make this one of the most exciting Arnold. It's, it's, it's so good to see how, you know, the way you act and the way you are. I mean, I can tell you are 100% excited. Oh, I'm definitely excited. I mean, how can you not be? I mean, look at this. This is, I mean, you got to understand, I only came up recently. Right. Before then, I've been watching these guys compete, following them, watching them, you know, reading the magazines, watching them and everything else. And now you get the opportunity to stand toe to toe to them. You know, I remember the first time I met William Bonner, it was 2018 in Romania. And, you know, we were kind of like, we were, he chatted to me then. He was such a nice dude and everything else. And He's super he, nice. You know, and he was giving words of motivation after I just did my show then. And, you know, and then I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be a day if one day I thought you get stamped next to him on stage? Yeah. And now it's like, here's your shot. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll, you'll see when you get to the States and you, you'll meet guys like Brandon and William. Oh, yeah. Total class acts. You know, oh, there's no, you don't see no attitudes, you know, I'm the champ and stuff. They're totally down to earth, never changed, always the same. And, and this will be like, like I said, you, you're going to see these guys and be like, damn, this is, this is awesome. Not only to compete against these guys, but to meet these guys and, and, yeah. and talk to them on a different level than, you know, than being on, on Instagram or, or, or whatever True. social media. True. And that's why they're such a great ambassador for the sports. Yeah. You, know? you know, you see them guys, but you know that their personality matches who you see, and they are that nice guys that you can talk to. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Honestly. Right. Right. You know? Give me your prediction. Oh. <laughs> Honest prediction. Don't be, don't don't you know that, to put yourself in wherever you yeah. think you're gonna fit in, and 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 I just want to know what you're saying. Okay. Um. Brandon, obviously. Top place. I mean, you can you can even deny that he has he had to put in top place. William definitely neither a close second or battle for second place. I want to be there third place. Okay. 
And then you have, I would say, Regan, somewhere in there in top five. Uh, Steve, right in there. There's a lot of people that could be in the top There's five. There's a lot of people. Hey, let, 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 let me you throw know, Akeem, let me but... throw a couple of names at you so you yeah. don't forget. Yeah, Akeem, Justin yep. Rodriguez. Yep. Cedric Both McMillan. Yeah. Oh yeah. So wow. there's there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of names. Honestly, there is a lot of names in this lineup. And honestly, when you look at it, you're literally going, okay, you all gonna come down who comes in shape and who doesn't. Right. Because anybody is dangerous in this lineup. Right. So it all comes down to who brings it, you know. And that's why I think this is why I think this lineup is so exciting mm -hmm. because it's not definite, okay, that's this is gonna be a top five. That's it. Everybody, you can shuffle every single person around in that lineup, and that's what makes it such an exciting thing. And yeah. that's why I'm excited to be in it, honestly. And it's the first time they do uh, prejudging on Friday. Oh, yes, yes. I, that was a surprise to me. I only found out last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find out. Uh, I find out because now we got to work two days instead of just one oh, day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. So prejudging will be Friday night. Finals will be Saturday night, which I think yeah. it's, you know, I, I, I don't know, but I always love to do the one day show. Yeah, I think so too. Be because, you know, once you do the pre judging in the morning or around noon, and then, you know, yeah. you just, you just not drink for a couple of more hours. Yep, yep. But, but if you, you know, have to do 24 after oh, that. Oh, man. What do you say? When we did Prague, right, we came up the pre judging, and the whole time my mind was racing. I couldn't think of straight. I couldn't breathe straight. I was thinking, okay, what did we do? Are we good enough? Are we right? And that was just four hours gap between that. Right. And four hours, they were like, okay, you know, go to the hotel, rest up, have a nap, and then come back for finals. Could you sleep for that four hours? Not a wink. You're literally wide awake and your mind is going berserk. But why? Because there's social media. You want to read and hear no, what people say. But they say I wasn't looking on social media because right. I didn't want to know. I okay. didn't want to know because I knew it would make it worse. <laughs> well, yeah, my mind is bad enough as it is. I don't need yeah. to look on social media, you know. So I literally we laid in the hotel room and I'm and I'm there and I'm trying to just do anything to stay distracted. Just don't think about it. Just you know, don't do it. Just it was the hardest four hours I've ever had. Really? It was crazy. Yeah. And now you're going to do it over 24 hours? You're going to have 24 hours where you can think about <laughs> well, everything. That's 24 hours off social media and off everything for me. That's, that's me being in a room and just waiting for 24 hours. To yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to see what's what's happening because me and Ford will be sitting right yes. in the front row watching the oh, screen, yeah. watching you guys and commentating. We get to tear you guys apart. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. By the way, Man. you're sponsored by Ford, by a hostile company. So, yes. How is that Hostiles. going for you? Man, it's, I mean, put it this way, man. In 2020, I was still working full time and trying to just juggle body beauty in between. Thanks to him. I mean, they saw something in me when, you know, what else did. And then he gave me a shot to do mm -hmm. this fully. And since then, I couldn't thank him enough, yeah. honestly. I couldn't be more grateful to him. And they've always they always show him his support, always behind me all the way. And honestly, as for me, I'm like, you know what? Yeah. This is what I've always dreamed of, and you made it come true for me. So I'm always going to be grateful to you. Yeah. No, he's you know he's he's an it's, I always like when athletes start supplement companies and are successful with it. They're not going to be able to sign guys because they have a different eye, a different vision, and yeah. they know and they know what it feels like as a competitor. I mean, you got no. there's certain things that you got to do. You don't sign a contract yeah. and just sit on your no. ass and don't do nothing. No. But at the end of the day, when you have a, a supplement sponsor who understands and knows where you are four weeks out, two weeks out, yes. one week out, yep. and they yep. know not to mess with you and not ask you to do things that doesn't, doesn't make any sense, you yep. know, that's a, that's a huge, huge benefit. So I It mean, really is. It really is. Especially he's been there himself. Right. You know, he that's knows why. exactly what you're going through. At this time, and you know, asking him for advice and asking him for insight and everything else. Huh. When someone's been through themselves, themselves, you feel like you got a helping hand that you can actually genuinely go yeah. up to them and say, "Look, I'm thinking about this. I'm not thinking about this. What do you think?" And they can tell you honest opinion that, "Look, if I was you, I'll do this instead." So it's it's amazing. It truly is amazing to have someone. Like I can't that. wait to look at his face when you step on stage. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Because it, you know, sometimes it's you know, you're biased, of course. You know, when oh, you like course. someone. But you gotta stay. You gotta be. You gotta be real. You know. And sometimes uh, because I know, I know, I know. When we did Prague, he was commentating Prague as well. 
Yeah. And you know, at the time, I was I didn't know when I go off, when I, when I go off, um, I go off the stage and everything else. And people were like, "Oh yeah, Ford's coming then," you know, on the show and everything. I was like, "Oh really?" And he sent me a clip of the, what he was saying. I was like, "Man, it was being harsh to me, man. It was, <laughs> it was gonna be on my side." <laughs> It was good, though. It was really good. It was awesome. I'm looking forward to it, brother. I wish you all the best for the next four weeks, man. Stay humble. Stay safe. Get to the U.S. Don't miss your flight, man. Don't be oh, doing no. none of that crazy stuff. Don't be late like Milos. He would be late for the airport. No. I'm <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing you in, in Ohio. Like I said, we will, we'll, I'll, get, I'll get there Wednesday the 2nd, so we'll, we'll, we'll be able to chat. And hopefully we can bring you on again before the Olympia. Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. and have another oh, well. chat, okay, brother? Oh yeah, thank All you right, very my man. much. For Take, me. Let me ask yeah. you something. How do you spell your last name? How do you pronounce it? It's Dauda. Dauda. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Because I wasn't sure, but I said Dauda. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's right there. Yeah, that's right there. yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's because I'm, you know, I was born and raised in Germany, so we, we yeah. would read it like this: Dau Dauda. Yeah, that, so you spot on. You always right. find always find guys that always born like Germany or different countries. Like, they can pronounce it right out. Of that, yeah, that. I just oh. want to be I want to be double sure because I might have to make <laughs> I have to make the promo and I have to pronounce it. So I want to make sure <laughs> I don't mess this up. Take care, brother. Be safe, my man. God bless Thank you. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you. God Take bless care. You. Thank you. All right.